Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. The mommiest of mommies, Kafka, is now a playable character in the second half of patch 1.2. And as is, new character was released tradition, it's time for an ultimate guide. Kafka has been one of the most anticipated characters in Honkai Star Rail for her mommy status, and not just based on her assets, but because she literally mommied our main character into existence by materializing us out of nowhere and shoving a Stellaron inside. Kafka is a lightning character that walks the path of nihility. In this video, we'll be going over so many things about her, including her traces, her relics, stat priorities, her light cones, teams, and playstyle, eidolons, and finally, my thoughts and opinions on Kafka. Let's dive straight into her traces, starting with her basic attack, Midnight Tumult. It's entirely unremarkable and should only be used if there are no dots on the enemy and if you literally just need to regenerate a skill point. But before continuing to the main parts of her kit, you need to know what damage over time is. Damage over time is a debuff on an enemy where they take damage every turn that they move. DOT or DOT is short for damage over time and Kafka's kit revolves around dots. Now that you know what DOT is, as for her actual useful abilities, we need to start with her ultimate. Her ultimate, Twilight Thrill, costs 120 energy and has her spinning to winning as she hits all the enemies on the field. Most importantly, it also applies a very large shock effect onto the enemy. 290% shock multiplier at level 10 is quite a lot and it lasts for two turns. And with her major trace, it also triggers any dots on the enemy to tick and deal damage. This includes all allied dots that were applied on it, as well as break related dots. Also to clarify, even if the enemy doesn't have Kafka's shock on them, it will still do an instance of Kafka's shock damage to them. This makes it an incredible tool for disposing of multiple enemies, especially multiple electric weak enemies. Another point worth noting is that while it triggers every dot on the enemy to do damage, it doesn't reduce the duration of the dot on the enemy. You're just getting literally a free activation of all the dots on the enemy. And finally, all dots deal damage based on the stats of their appliers. I'm planning on making a much more comprehensive guide on dot mechanics as well, so stay tuned for that. If you can't tell, well, her ultimate feels very good to use, especially with a bunch of dots on the enemy. Up next is her skill, Caressing Moonlight. Impossibilities of caressing a beam of light reflected off the moon aside, Kafka deals 160% attack scaling damage to the primary target. More importantly, her skill also activates any dot on the enemy, dealing 75% of all dots on the enemy at level 10. This is one of the primary ways that Kafka deals damage, and the dot triggering works just like her ultimates, except dealing 75% level 10 instead of 100% that her ultimate does at level 10. Strangely enough, this also hits adjacent targets for 60% attack scaling damage. But honestly, this doesn't really do much as it doesn't trigger dots on adjacent enemies. Now, it does help break some toughness bar on adjacent enemies, so that's really the main point of this part of the kit. But hey, we can't complain about free lightning toughness bar breaking on her skill. There's also these water droplet icons which indicate if an enemy has a dot on them. And an additional graphic, this little circular thingy, if Kafka's skill's primary target has a dot on them. This will help clarify which enemies you can trigger the skill's dot triggering effect. It's also important to note that her skill doesn't apply the dot, so you'll want to apply her dot onto the enemy first before using her skill. And up next we have her talent, Gentle But Cruel. When an ally hits an enemy with her basic attack, Kafka will perform a follow-up attack against that target and apply the massive shock from her ultimate on the enemy. It has a one turn cooldown and it only hits one enemy. This is a great tool for spreading Kafka's shock on additional enemies and also encourages her teammates to use a basic attack after Kafka's turn. 
Last but not the least, we have her overworld technique. Mercy is not forgiveness. Edgy yet beautiful trace name aside, it deals some lightning damage to all enemies and more importantly applies her ultimate shock to all enemies. This thing also has a massive circular hitbox allowing you to simultaneously engage enemies that are very far apart in the overworld and apply shock to them. It also has the best battle engagement camera angle in the game if you know what I mean. Now let's go over the energy and toughness damage of her kit. Her basic attack deals the standard 30 toughness damage and generates the standard 20 energy. You won't be using this very often. Her skill deals the standard 60 toughness damage to the primary target and 30 toughness damage to adjacent targets. The dots that are triggered do not deal any toughness damage. Like most skills, it generates 30 energy. Her ultimate deals 60 toughness damage to all enemies, and like her skill, the dots triggered do not deal toughness damage, and like all ultimates, it generates 5 energy. Her talent's follow-up attack deals 30 toughness damage and generates 10 energy, and her technique does a hefty 60 toughness damage to all enemies and generates 0 energy. For trace priority, you want to level up her ultimate as much as you can. Follow this up with her skill as the second priority. Leveling up her talent and basic attack isn't a priority since they don't affect her dot damage, but eventually you can get around to doing so if you so desire because a little bit more damage is a little bit more damage. As for how you generally want to play Kafka, you should first apply her ultimate dot to the enemy via one of the three ways to do it. Her technique, her talent, or her ultimate. Then you want to spam her skill as much as possible on enemies that have dots on them. And you also want to spam her ultimate as much as possible because that will do a lot of dot damage. Every couple of enemy turns you'll need to refresh her dot via her talent or her ultimate. And every turn that Kafka takes you should try to have an ally do a basic attack so that she can activate her talent. That pretty much summarizes her playstyle in a nutshell. Now as with literally any guide video, we need to talk about her relics. Now Kafka is a dot focused character. The main difference between dot damage and regular damage is that dots cannot crit. As such, we want to avoid crit stats on Kafka. Another stat we need to talk about is effect hit rate. There are two main effect hit rate breakpoints for Kafka. Kafka has a bonkers major trace that adds 30% to the base chance for her ultimate shock to apply, and this applies to anything in Kafka's kit that applies shock, which includes her technique, her talent's follow-up attack, and her ultimate. This brings it to the never before seen, at least I think, 130% base chance. At 130 base chance, Kafka only needs 28% effect hit rate to achieve a 100% chance for her to apply her ultimate shock to a high level memory of chaos enemy. Now her signature Lycone also has a shock, albeit a much smaller shock, with a 100% base chance to apply. If you want this thing to have a 100% application, you'll need a much higher 67% effect hit rate. Personally, I recommend just going for the 28% for Kafka's ultimate shock as the light cones shock is mainly just a bonus and not really a necessity. 28% is reasonable to achieve through substats alone. Now let's talk about her four piece relic options. The overall best option for her is the Band of Sizzling Thunder. You absolutely want to spam her skill to activate dots on the enemy. And as such, you'll have excellent uptime on the 20% attack buff that this thing provides. Again, dots scale off attack, so the 20% attack is very good. Another attack focus set is the four piece champion of Streetwise Boxing. This thing does have a bit of ramp up time, but it does provide 25% attack and is actually pretty close in performance to the four piece sizzling thunder. A sleeper pick on Kafka is the four piece genius of brilliant stars. Against a quantum weak enemy, this thing can actually outperform the sizzling thunder since the defense multiplier is less common than things that boost attack. Still, it's more situational and feels weird to use on a lightning DPS character and the enemy certainly won't always be quantum weak. Next is the Thief of Shooting Meteor. I think this set has a lot of potential as increasing the damage that the break dot does will also significantly improve Kafka's damage output. The energy it provides when breaking can also come in clutch and can shorten the amount of turns she needs to do her ultimate. However, you need to break with Kafka, and oftentimes the enemy is dead before you even manage to break them. This will need more theory crafting to flesh out and is likely to be much more situational, but it definitely has some potential. Lastly, you can consider the Musketeer of Wild Wheat, as if it helps you reach 134 speed, Kafka will be able to go twice during the 150 action value first Memory of Chaos turn, which can hugely save a lot of turns in Memory of Chaos if you're able to wipe out a couple waves in the first Memory of Chaos turn. 
Up next, we have our two-piece set options. The Space Ceiling Station is a no-nonsense set that simply provides 24% attack if you reach 120 speed, which for Kafka, it's highly recommended that she has a lot of speed. The Pangalactic Commercial Enterprise is good if you're able to get a chunky amount of effect hit rate for her signature light cone to be more consistent, but you do need a lot of effect hit rate rolls in order for this thing to honestly be worth it. Funnily enough, the Fleet of Ageless is usable on her, and she will benefit from the 8% team-wide attack boost, which will also boost her teammates, but overall, I think the 24% attack from the Space Ceiling Station is much more valuable. The two-piece Talia provides a lot of break effect, which requires more theory crafting, and also requires Kafka to have a lot of speed to fully utilize, but I can see some potential for this two-piece set. And finally, while generally not recommended, there are some niche situations for the sprightly Von Wack to allow for two-turn Kafka ultimates. But alas, I don't really think that's worth it. So let's talk about main stats next. Since dots are the focus of Kafka's kit, an attack percent body is her best option. She scales very poorly off of crit stats, which is why I have not recommended them. Now, some people might consider effect hit rate, which if you have no effect hit rate on your substats, you can consider it. But considering you'll probably have around 20 to 30% effect hit rate through your substats, I highly recommend attack percent for the body. For her boots, I think that the more she moves, the more often she'll be able to trigger all the dots on the enemy and the more energy she gets and therefore the more ultimate she can spam. And this is especially so if you can hit 134 speed for her to go twice in Memory of Chaos. As such, I think speed boots is the way to go. However, attack is also a viable option. Up next is the sphere where lightning damage is by far and away the best option. As for the link rope, I recommend an attack percent link rope. Although there are some niche situations where you can have her ultimate up one turn sooner thanks to the energy recharge rope. So if you do want to try that out, feel free free to. And I haven't theory crafted break effect enough to say if that's a good option, so as such, I just recommend an attack percent rope because it's guaranteed gains and completely unsituational. For substats, you'll want as much attack percent as possible and enough speed to hit 134 speed. Then you'll want effect hit rate with a goal of 28% for 100% shock application from her ultimate shock. Break effect is good as well because if Kafka can break the enemy, that is more dot damage. Finally, flat attack is decent, but the flat attack provides much less attack attack than attack percent does. Lastly, but not the leastly, some effect resistance can come in clutch. And after relics, we have the obligatory light cone section. How exciting. For light cones, you might be surprised to know that her signature light cone is overall her best option. This thing provides its own mini shock and a bunch of speed and some bonus damage. However, a close second place is the good night and sleep well light cone if the enemy has three debuffs on them. We can see that at Superimposition 5, this thing's damage is competitive to that of her signature light cone. However, you'll want three debuffs on the enemy in order for this thing to shine. So another Nihility character that can apply two additional debuffs on the enemy is highly recommended. Eyes of the Prey is a great option as well as it basically solves your effect hit rate issues and is a no-nonsense unconditional light cone. Now it's likely though that you'll have too much effect hit rate, but alas. Fermata is a good choice as well as its break effect, situationally doing more damage when you break the enemy, is nice to have. And after that, the in the name of the world is a viable choice, but do keep in mind that the attack buff only works on this skill. Now an interesting option which I haven't fully tested yet is before the tutorial mission starts. Theoretically, you might be able to consistently perform two turn ultimates if her talent also triggers this thing's passive if the enemy has defense down on them. So this alone could be worth it, but until further testing is done, I'm going to leave this thing with a tentative question mark for its rating. Next, let's talk about a couple of team archetypes for Kafka. Kafka has two main teams that I tested and recommend. The first is a low budget dot focused team. There are already some dot focused characters in the game like Sampo, and to a lesser extent, Serval. This patch also released Luca, a bleed damage focused character. Both Sampo and Luca are able to output very large dot multipliers onto the enemy, which leads to Kafka being able to trigger them repeatedly. On top of that, both of these characters actually increase dot damage taken by the enemy. Combining said dot characters along with any survivability you might need will instantly build you a strong Kafka team. For example, a team with E0 Kafka, Sampo, Luka, plus a healer is a great place to start. Even without any Eidolons on any of these characters, this team feels already quite powerful. 
Both Luka and Sampo are able to amplify the dot damage taken by the enemy thanks to their ultimates increasing the vulnerability multiplier. The goal of this team is quite simple. Tag as many enemies with as many dots as possible and then spam Kafka's skill and ultimate in order to activate all those dots as often as possible. Once enemies were loaded up with dots, we're doing over 41,000 damage with Kafka's skill and 113,000 damage with Kafka's ultimate against four targets. We can see that the damage really starts to add up over time, as our enemies are literally killing themselves when they move. The next team I wanted to showcase is one that focuses more on Kafka's personal damage, which I'll call a hyper carry Kafka. Kafka is a character who really enjoys being buffed, as long as it's not crit related buffs. Kafka also really enjoys debuffs on the enemy. This team of Kafka's Silver Wolf, Ting Yun, and Luo Gigachad allows Kafka to do terrible, terrible damage. Ting Yun's buffs and energy really amplify Kafka's damage like crazy, since she provides Kafka with both lots of attack and lots of bonus damage, and much more frequent ultimates. Meanwhile, Silver Wolf's Resistance Shred and Defense Shred are already leading to 42,000 damage dot ticks from Kafka. We can see here that a hyper carry Kafka is also incredibly powerful, and you absolutely do not need to build a bunch of other dot characters. As for some other teammates, Asta and Serval in my opinion stand out. Asta's team-wide attack buff and speed are incredible for a Kafka dot team. Serval is an interesting option as you'll be able to shred through electric toughness bars and play around break effect and extend shock durations. Overall, Kafka has a lot of incredible options to choose from. Now let's blitz through her Eidolons before we get to the closing statements and my final assessment of her. Eidolon 1 should increase the vulnerability multiplier to dot damage by 30%, which is obviously an incredible Eidolon. The only drawback to this is that you'll want more than 28% effect hit rate since this thing only has a 100% base chance. Eidolon 2 increases dot damage for her entire team by 25%, and Eidolon 4 will require a lot of additional testing, but could solve Kafka's energy issues and lead to two-turn ultimate rotations. Eidolon 6 adds a massive 156% additional multiplier to her ultimate shock damage and extends it by a turn for good measure. By the time you're at Eidolon 6 with her Super Imposition 5 Light Cone, Kafka's skill will deal around 213% of an E0S1 Kafka. Her dots will do 261% and her ultimate will do 242%. Basically, she'll be roughly 2.4-ish times stronger than an E0S1 Kafka at E6S5. So there you go, the ultimate guide for the ultimate mommy. Kafka is a character that does not disappoint with her performance, and there's something else about her that I haven't even mentioned yet that actually makes her even more valuable. Similar to transformative reactions in Genshin Impact, Kafka relies on dot damage. Relying on damage over time damage makes it much easier to farm her gear. Instead of clawing away desperately at every last bit of crit and double crit relics, all you need is a bunch of attack percent and hopefully some speed and effect hit rate. In other words, this makes Kafka very free to play friendly as it's much easier to build her in comparison to crit based DPS characters like Jin Yuan. Kafka also being able to utilize underutilized characters like Sampo and Luka also makes her even more free to play friendly as this allows you to put all your OP supports like Branyo and, and Silverwolf on the other team. What's also crazy about this is that Kafka does a very similar amount of damage to a well-built crit-based Jing Yuan. And we're talking about a Kafka with pretty much garbage attack percent relics. So yeah, let me know what you think about our favorite Stellar Run Hunter down below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.